When it comes to the X-Men of the Marvel Universe, the Sentinels are one of the major threats the mutants have to deal with in almost all timelines and realities. We had a glimpse of the capabilities of these robots in the live-action movie X-Men Days of Future Past, which indeed looked deadly. However, the story of Sentinels expands far wider in the timeline than what has been shown in the movie. A few models wandered in the time stream, creating chaos and widespread destruction in different realities, and they were almost indestructible. In today's video, we will be talking about the different Sentinels that have been a part of the Marvel Universe, so without further delay, let us begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Sentinels Mark 1 through 7. The story of Sentinels begins with the anti mutant bigot, Bolivar Trask. He had built the first set of Sentinels and named them Mark 1, with the ability to detect mutants, flight, and energy blasts. The reason behind Bolivar Trask's hatred for mutants was fueled by the insecurity that made him believe that someday the humans would be controlled by the mutants. During a television debate with Charles Xavier, Trask ordered a sentinel to seize the professor, but it instead captured Trask. The artificial intelligence which operated the sentinels inferred from its programming that the only way to stop the mutants from controlling humans was possible if they controlled humanity. Bolivar Trask was taken to his headquarters, but fortunately, the X-Men arrived and saved him. Following this, Bolivar Trask shut down the sentinels program. Years later, Bolivar's son, Larry Trask, decided to restart the Sentinel program, believing that the X-Men killed his father. Using his father's design as a base, Larry developed an advanced set of Sentinels named Mark II, with the ability to physically adapt to any threat and detect mutants. This breed of Sentinels could not only fly and project energy blasts, but also teleport and self-repair. Larry always wore a medallion that could cloak his mutant powers from the Sentinels. However, when the Sentinels engaged in a fight with the X-Men, Larry's medallion fell off, following which the Sentinels attacked him. The X-Men defended him and Cyclops fooled the robots by stating that the sun was the main source of mutagenic radiation, following which the remaining Sentinels went to take down the sun. While orbiting around the sun, one of the Sentinels marked number two computed that they lacked the power to destroy the sun, and hence decided to have a different approach towards the problem. They sought to control the sun's radiation to create a solar flare that would sterilize mankind from giving birth to mutants. However, orbiting around the sun for a long time caused mutancy in number two, who then decided to kill humans to reach their goal. They returned to Earth to execute the plans, but were opposed by the Avengers, who eventually destroyed them. Larry Trask also died during the events, and Mark II Sentinels were shut down for good. Following this, the government of the United States took over the Sentinels program, making Dr. Stephen Lang the head of the federal research. The program, Project Armageddon, was then initiated to study more about mutation and how it gave superhuman abilities. However, Lang later revealed to be an anti-bigot like Bolivar and used his access to refigure the designs of Bolivar and Larry to create the Sentinels marked Mark III. Apart from possessing the ability of flight, mutant detection, and projecting energy blasts, these robots always provided tough competition to the X-Men. They also had this unique ability to create a life-supporting bubble that could carry six human-sized living beings. The new set of Sentinels was, however, defective, as Lang worked on the incomplete notes of the Trasks, and also could not hire scientists owing to his project's secrecy. The X-Men and Darkstar ultimately destroyed them at some point, following the second assassination attempt on Senator Robert Kelly. The President's cabinet initiated an illegal project named Wide Awake to capture and research any superhuman and mutant whom it considered a national threat. Soon, Sebastian Shaw, who was then an industrial tycoon, was then contacted by the agency to develop a new breed of Sentinels. Following this, three classes of Sentinels were created, namely Mark IV, Mark V, and Mark VI. Mark IV had added capabilities like shooting cables from its wrists and powerful searchlights, while Mark V could spray liquid nitrogen from its eyes. Mark VI also possessed standard capabilities like the Sentinels, but what made it unique was its ability to learn and adapt the fighting abilities of its enemies in a brief amount of time. Shaw, however, used these Sentinels for his own purposes, which were unknown to the government. Sentinel Mark VII was also created by Sebastian Saw, specifically to capture Machine Man, and it was human-operated. Master Mold 
During the period of Boulevard Trask, when he invested his time in developing the Sentinels program, he first made the Master Mold, which then created the army of Mark I Sentinels. However, this version was damaged when the X-Men damaged the headquarters. Later, when the program was undertaken by the US government and Dr. Stephen Lang was made the head of federal research, he rebuilt the Master Mold, but did not use it. During the battle with the X-Men, the space station containing Lang and the Sentinels was destroyed, and Lang's memory engrams were printed on the Master Mold's computer, which resulted in the Master Mold believing itself to be Lang. Master Mold survived the explosion, and built his new base on a nearby asteroid. Later, he went to Earth to capture Angel and Iceman, but accidentally caught the Hulk as well. On the space station, Hulk damaged Master Mold, and the three heroes escaped. Master Mold even tried to blow away the base to kill everyone, but the mutants, along with Hulk, managed to escape. The damaged body of the Master Mold fell into the sea of the coast of Alaska, where it reconstructed itself from sunken ships and oil platform wreckage. It spotted Cyclops searching for his wife and child in Anchorage, and attacked him. Cyclops managed to escape after shooting at the gas storage tanks, leading to an explosion that damaged Master Mold's body completely. However, its brain module managed to survive. Later at Muir Island, it mind-controlled Dr. Moira McTaggart to create the Retribution Virus. The virus prohibited the mutants from using their power, eventually killing them. Moira's lover, Banshee, noticed the unusual nature of Moira and informed Cyclops. Master Mold's robots had taken over the island where they captured an infected Banshee and a mutant girl, but Cyclops was able to free Moira from its control. Master Mold's army was led by a special robot, Conscience, which was programmed with Lang's memory engrams, and they defeated the combined efforts of Dr. McTaggart, Cyclops, and his ally, Callisto. The virus then mutated and affected humans as well, which made Conscious question the purpose of Master Mold. Conscious eventually destroyed Master Mold, and then itself to prevent further virus usage. Even then, Master Mold survived and set its target on Franklin Richards, a school child. Franklin was saved by the team of superheroes called the Power Pack, and Master Mold was destroyed. It resurfaced later and was finally destroyed by Captain Britain of the Secret Avengers. Master Mold was a sentinel itself and possessed similar firepower to Mark I, along with the ability to fly. It could also detect mutants and, surprisingly, could control minds. It could transform organic tissue into machinery with the help of its fabrication functionality. Master Mold could repair itself as well as alter its size. After Lang's memory engrams were imprinted into its program, it acquired vast knowledge about robotics. Mother Mold At some point, an anti-mutant group named Orcus was established. The group, led by Dr. Killian Devo, created an artificial intelligence named the Mother Mold to fight against mutants. Unlike Master Mold, which was made for the purpose of building Sentinels, Mother Mold was programmed to create new Master Molds. When the X-Men learned about its creation, they sought to take it down before it could come online. They released three out of four control collars that linked Mother Mold with Orcus Forge. The last and final collar was supposed to be freed by Mystique, but unfortunately, Orcus sucked her out into the vacuum of space before she could complete the task. Following this, Nightcrawler teleported himself and Wolverine so that the latter could slice away the final collar. Wolverine managed to tear off the link, but it cost him his life and Nightcrawler's. Mother Mold did come online, but it fell into the sun and was completely destroyed. Mother Mold was created for building Master Molds, and it also had the potential to upgrade itself via Nano Sentinels. Mother Mold could also generate tendrils to entangle her opponents and take them down. Nimrod Nimrod was a highly advanced sentinel from an alternate reality of Earth-811. In this reality, the sentinels had already wiped off the majority of the mutants, but a few managed to evade for which the creation of a superior breed of sentinels was initiated as a part of Project Nimrod. While Kate Pride and Rachel Summers had arrived to shut down the program, a prototype of the Nimrod Sentinel got activated. Kate managed to trigger Rachel's secondary mutation, after which she escaped via the time stream. Following this, Nimrod tried replicating Rachel's time-traveling process mechanically, which led him to drift aimlessly in the time stream. He arrived on Earth 61029, 19 years in the past. He used the records on mutants and located Forge in Eagle Plaza, Dallas, Texas. 
Forge, in this reality, was married to Storm and had two children. Nimrod arrived before them and killed Storm instantly. He took the children hostage and made Forge incorporate a functional time device in his system. However, Forge did not inform the Sentinel that the temporal jumps in the time stream using the device were erratic and Nimrod was again lost in the time stream. He then emerged on Earth 616 in front of William Stryker, who was just about to commit suicide. Stryker considered Nimrod to be a gift of God and later dismantled him to access its databases to learn more about the history of Earth 811. He used this information to predict similar events in his reality or even manipulate them. Nimrod, however, provided a few false facts in order to manipulate Stryker. Eventually, Nimrod located the forge of Earth 616 in Dallas and forced him to repair his body by threatening to kill Storm in this reality. However, Forge managed to send a distress call to the X-Men without being noticed, and the new X-Men responded. After a long fight, Surge, with Mercury's help, managed to overload Nimrod's time-traveling device and sent him into a time vortex. Nimrod later came back to Earth-616, but 35 years before his creation, and that too without any previous memory, and saved Jamie Rodriguez from a robber. Later, it assumed a humanoid form named Nicholas Hunter and moved in with Rodriguez and his family. He soon became friends with Thomas Rodriguez, and when he used his computer, he learned about the government's policies of protecting humanity against mutants. Nimrod finally had an objective, and that was saving humanity from mutants. When Juggernaut tried robbing a bank, Nimrod arrived and attacked him. The X-Men also arrived at the scene, and Nimrod fought them as well. After an ensuing long battle, Nimrod was defeated by the X-Men and made to retreat. Following this, Nimrod improved his ability to replicate humans and took over a complete humanoid form. Nimrod worked as a fish porter. One day, when he went out with Jamie to a bar to celebrate his first working week, two gunmen attacked them. Following Nimrod turned back to its robotic form and decimated the two gunmen with an energy blast. Following numerous events, Nimrod was restored into a new life form by Siege Perilous with the name Bastion. Nimrod was a class Omega Sentinel and was considered a global threat. It was a highly advanced robot that could automatically repair itself. Nimrod could detect mutants and superheroes. Nimrod could manipulate energy using which it could project concussive plasma and disintegrating blasts. He also has the ability to manipulate magnetic energy to levitate iron and steel and generate force fields about himself. Bastion Bastion was formed when the giant sentinel master mold absorbed the prototype sentinel Nimrod into its structural system. It was indestructible, and when it fought against the X-Men, the latter had no other option but to force it through a pan-dimensional portal known as the Siege Perilous. Bastion emerged as a human-sentinel hybrid. Bastion was taken into the care of Rose Gilberti. Rose raised him like her own and gave him the name Sebastian Gilberti. From the media, Bastion became aware of the anti-mutant policies and later joined an anti-mutant group like Graydon Creed's Friends of Humanity. Bastion possessed the ability to acquire all superhuman attributes. He also had superhuman speed, durability, strength, agility, and healing factors. He also possessed the ability to manipulate space and time to freely traverse the alternate timelines. Prime Sentinels The Prime Sentinels were humans with cybernetic nanotech enhancements, which when activated, could transform into powerful weapons. These Sentinels were created by Bastion when it initiated the Operation Zero Tolerance program. The altered human subjects were used as sleeper agents, unaware of their abilities, and when the time came, the program activated them. Prime Sentinels were sent to capture Charles Xavier and the other X-Men by Bastion. However, it was defeated by the combined efforts of the X-Men and S.H.I.E.L.D. The Prime Sentinels had numerous built-in equipment and weapons that were derived from nanotechnology. These gave them super strength and the ability to transform into weapons out of it which could project powerful blasts. These sentinels could also dampen the powers of mutants nearby, and their combat computers could help them predict any surprise attacks or events. One of the most lethal abilities of the Prime Sentinels was his capability to inject nanomachines into anyone and transform them into a Prime Sentinel. Karima Shapander, aka Omega Sentinel. Omega Sentinel were the second generation of Prime Sentinels with further advanced technology. 
Karima Shapander was an Indian National Police Officer who became an Omega Sentinel after being infected with Omega Sentinel technology. She possessed state-of-the-art technology, which made her enhancements convert into lethal weapons upon activation. Like other Sentinels, she was programmed to exterminate mutants. Thanks to the combined efforts of Charles Xavier and Magneto, she was able to overcome it, following which she helped mutant kind. However, her infection often triggered her to attack mutants. After a complete machine version of her was supplanted, the Omega Sentinel sparked the creation of the anti-mutant organization, Orcus. Owing to the nanomachines injected into her, Karima Shapander possessed a wide range of abilities. She had superhuman strength and enhanced sensors, which helped her track her opponents or even detect mutants with pinpoint accuracy. Karima Shapander's reflexes were also enhanced, along with her speed and endurance. The Nanites could repair itself from damage and also morph from generating weapons and blasts to life support, machine interface, hologram projection, threat adaptation, and more. The advanced technological implants allow Karima to access computers throughout the world and extract any data or information when needed. Karima could also project energy blasts and fly. Wild Sentinels the Wild Sentinels came active when the Mumadre of Charles Xavier, Cassandra Nova, used Bolivar Trask's nephew, Donald Trask III, to activate the Master Mold that Bolivar had once created. Cassandra made Donald order the Master Mold to abandon its test radius and send four lethal giant sentinels known as Wild Sentinels to attack Genosha. Cassandra then copied Trask's DNA and killed him while the Wild Sentinels eradicated about 16 million mutants residing in Genosha. These sentinels, unlike the previous models, did not have any specific design, as Master Mold scavenged whatever technology it could get and created them. However, the sentinels were later not seen and presumed to be shut down for good. These sentinels were later given consciousness by the Shi'ar AI danger, after which when they realized what they had done, they left the planet out of guilt. Later, it returned to save Earth and was eventually destroyed. The Wild Sentinels were primitive and not as technologically advanced as other sophisticated versions like Nimrod or Bio Sentinels. They are mostly built out of scraps and all its weaponry are open to customization. Bio Sentinels The Bio Sentinels were formed after Kaga developed a technological virus that was injected into the corpses of humans and mutants. Lori Collins was one such Bio Sentinel. Born to Sean Garrison and Gail Collins, Lori was a second generation mutant, owing to her father's ill practices of manipulating people to get money, fame, and women. Her mother, Gail, decided to separate her ways and raise Lori on her own. At some point when she grew up, Gail sent her to the Xavier Institute in hopes of getting her daughter out of her emotional constraints. However, she faced difficulties in bonding with the other students, and often faced harsh criticism. After the events of the M-Day, when most of the mutants had lost their powers, Lori was one of the very few who managed to preserve their mutant abilities. At some point, she was shot in the back of her head by a sniper hired by William Stryker named Matthew Risman. Following this, she was converted into a bio-sentinel by Kaga in an effort to exterminate the X-Men. She was released into a crowd of people in San Francisco when Emma Frost spotted her and tried to reach out. However, the sentinel program implanted in her came online, appearing as a massive flesh-made sentinel. Lori fired several missiles. She was then attacked by Beast using the X-2 ship. She was taken away from the crowd after she released vicious alien-like creatures known as the Broods. There were other Bio-Sentinels as well. Great on Creed, the son of Victor Creed and Mystique from Earth-616, had also become a Bio-Sentinel. After his death during his rally for his presidential candidacy, his corpse was dug up by a group of purifiers and later infected, resurrected with the help of the techno-organic virus taken from an offspring of Magus. Nano-Sentinels the Nano Sentinels were primarily made to infect humans and convert their organic bodies into emotionless chassis with the help of its biometallic robotization. Beast later identified them as an artificial sickness within mutant blood cells. This technology was later developed by Forge under the influence of Cassandra Nova to serve a new purpose. The humans infected by the Nano Sentinels could sense mutants, and when they did, the programming would make them attack the mutants instantly. Cassandra intended to infect the world leaders, but before that, she infected Storm and made her attack the X-Men in Wakanda. Nova also infected Teen Abomination in her second attempt to attack the mutant when they had moved near Atlantis. 
Later, when the Technopath Trinary was recruited into the X-Men, the mutant with the help of the X-Men connected to every Sentinel and destroyed them, thereby putting an end to Cassandra's plans to spread the Bio-Sentinels over the world. Although the main purpose of the Nano-Sentinels was to transform living beings into lethal cyborgs, it later became an airborne sickness, affecting mutants specifically. The sickness resulted in symptoms like flu, eventually causing biodegradation in its host. It could also implant sentinel-like qualities into a person's amygdala and make them go into a murderous frenzy upon detecting a mutant. Similarly, if the infected were mutants themselves, they would follow the path of the kill program before attempting to end their own lives. Stark Sentinels as showcased in the Axis storyline, Tony Stark, under the influence of Red Skull, created a new breed of Sentinels known as the Stark Sentinels. Later, when Red Skull became Red Onslaught and the Avengers confronted him at Genosha, he deployed the Stark Sentinels to fight the superheroes. Soon, every single superhero was taken down except Iron Man, who Magneto and his group of supervillains saved. One of the Sentinels was defeated by Absorbing Man, while the combined forces of Scarlet Witch and Doctor Doom took the rest down. Later at some point, one of the Stark Sentinels was retrieved by AIM, indeed, to access its database. The Descendants, who also wanted to get hold of the Sentinels, and the two fought until the Avengers arrived and confiscated the robot. Hank Pym then used his neural inhibitor to shut it down. Stark's set of Sentinels were made based on his study on superheroes, for which it did not possess any algorithm of taking down supervillains. Tri-Sentinel The Tri-Sentinel was created by the god of mischief, Loki, through magically merging three prototypes of Sentinels manufactured by Sebastian Shaw. The Sentinels were programmed to attack a nuclear power plant to kill thousands of people around. The danger was, however, averted after Spider-Man, with his new Captain Universe powers, destroyed the Tri-Sentinel. Later, the Life Foundation acquired the damaged parts and sought to reprogram it for security purposes, which failed as the Tri-Sentinel, upon activation, rejected Life Foundation's programming and continued to function according to Loki's programming. This time, it was taken down by the combined efforts of Spider-Man and Nova. Several years later, Mendel Strom found the regenerated Tri-Sentinel at the abandoned Tower of Life Foundation. Mendel unleashed the robot to destroy Spider-Man and New York City, but it was stolen by a duplicate of Spider-Man, which eventually made Mendel strike a deal with him to get access to an army of Tri-Sentinels. When the robots invaded New York City, Spider-Man merged with his duplicate and used his access to Tri-Sentinel to make them return to where they came from. The Tri-Sentinels could fly, shoot power energy and hypercold beams, and project energy shields. It could restrain its enemies using metallic coils and also discharge gases like tear gas at its opponents. Sentinel Squad 1 The Sentinel Squad 1 was created after Valerie Cooper convinced the government that during times of crisis, they could not rely on the Avengers, Fantastic Four, or the X-Men, and so they needed the Sentinels for safety. Unlike the other Sentinels, this new breed, developed by Tony Stark, required a pilot. Soon, a team of Sentinels was created, and James Rhodes was made their leader. The other member of Sentinel Squad 1 were Alexander Lexington, Jake Slyton, John Steele, Meld, and Valerie Cooper. Although these Sentinels had the potential to become protectors of the planet, they ended up falling way short of their expectations, failing various missions. William Stryker shut down one of the Sentinels, while the rest were destroyed in a battle. The Sentinel suits gave the pilots access to a wide variety of weaponry, along a tough armor made with a unique combination of steel and fiberglass based on Mr. Fantastic's formula. The hands, chest, and the eye region were capable of firing pulsar beams. The suits could deploy missiles, sonics, nets, smoke bombs, etc. The brawler model had an additional adamantium coating and enhanced strength which made it effective for close combat, while the torch models had flamethrowing cannons fitted on their shoulders. The recon model was the most sophisticated one, and which could access any database as well as track its target efficiently, while the stealth model could cloak itself from the world. X-51 Machine Man At some point, when scientists were working on a top-secret US military project on creating an army of 51 sophisticated, independent-thinking robotic soldiers, Dr. Abel Stack took one of them back home for experimental purposes. He believed that the robots would work fine if raised properly, like humans. When the rest of the 50 robots began malfunctioning, the organization sought to bring them down by detonating an explosive placed inside them. Dr. Abel tried removing the explosive, but before he could do so, it exploded. X-51, or the robot, took the identity of Aaron Stack and left vowing that one day he would fulfill Abel's dream of bringing peace between robots and humans. 
He initially became a fugitive and realized that the world was machine phobic. During the fight between Cable and Bastion, Machine Man was infected with Sentinel nanotechnology and made to serve Bastion. Although X-51 freed himself, the Sentinel program was buried with his software. The X-51, aka Machine Man, possessed superhuman strength and durability. He could extend his limbs up to 100 feet and could also fly by using anti-gravity units. However, after X-51 absorbed Sentinel nanotechnology, it acquired further enhanced abilities. Along with augmented strength, the new technology allowed X-51 to self-repair itself with all Sentinel weapons. Exonyms. The Exonyms were showcased in the Uncanny X-Men issue 525, fighting against the X-Force in the future, when the latter group arrived to stop the attacks of Nimrod on Utopia. Later, when they encountered other Exonyms, they destroyed the robots except one, which Cypher manipulated. Cypher revealed to the Sentinel its position of that of a servant, following which the Exonym sided with the mutants. X-Force, with the help of this Exonym, managed to enter the Master Mold's area and later into the Sentinel Center to deactivate and kill several other Exonyms. There were different Exonym models. Mark IV and Mark V Exonym models were specially designed to take down Magneto and Baton Rouge. These Exonyms, along with another model known as the Non-Ferrous Exonyms, had the minimum amount of metal. Alpha and Beta Exonyms were evolved models that were known to be equipped with flamethrowers, cameras. These models were highly durable and could withstand temperatures of 5000 degrees Fahrenheit and below. Samurai Sentinels In an alternate reality of Earth-295, a group of human resistance fighters formed a group known as X-Terminated to take down Weapon X and its mutant regime. After saving Harper Simmons from keeping Murdoch's hounds when they arrived at one of Dark Beast's laboratories, they encountered the Minister of Famine Summers and his agents of the Ministry of Famine. Soon, the two groups engaged in a fight, following which Samurai Sentinels 0834C and 0356C were dispatched to join Sector 22B to help the Famine agents after they were overwhelmed by the X-Terminated. These Samurai Sentinels possessed abilities like every other Sentinel. In the alternate reality of Earth-295, the Samurai Sentinels were used by Apocalypse and Weapon Omega. Prototype Sentinel The Prototype Sentinel was created during the 20th century by the Hellfire Club while operating from San Francisco. The sole purpose of its creation was to take down Overmen, the next stage in human development, if ever it went out of control. When the X-Club time-traveled to the past to obtain DNA samples from the parents of Dr. Nemesis, they learned that Dr. Nicola Bradley and his wife Catherine Price had been working on a new energy source. When the Hellfire Club arrived to take this energy to power, their Sentinels, the X-Club fought them, and their battle caused the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. The prototype Sentinel was gigantic in size, and although it was not weaponized, it gave the X-Men a hard time to take down. Some other types of Sentinel. Sentinex. The Sentinex was the 10th generation of Sentinels created by Donald Pierce to hunt down mutants. These Sentinels were showcased at the end of day's timeline, and were produced even when only sick mutants were alive. Neo Sentinels. In an alternate reality of Earth-161, Neo Sentinels were a breed of Sentinels created by Bolivar Trask's daughter, Siegfried. The consortium later used these Sentinels after the last of the Mark II Sentinels were destroyed. Super Sentinels Weapon Plus had created artificially evolved superhumans using nanotechnology, three of which, namely Huntsman, Phantom X, and Ultimaton, were chosen to form mutant hunting super sentinels. Sentinel MKISO 100 years in the future of Battle Realm, an elite mutant created a group of sentinels to control the champions of the contest. Eventually, these Sentinels rebelled and managed to find a way back into the present day. These Sentinels then adapted to the ISO-8 rich environment of the current contest and evolved to become Sentinel Mark ISO. They were powered by an ISO fusion engine. Marvelous Verdict And that was the list of Sentinels appearing in the Marvel Universe, and we hope you've liked our content. Feel free to add your points in the comment section and let us know if we have missed any other Sentinel. We certainly hope to see a few of them in live-action movies especially Nimrod, whose interactions with humans and mutants have been very interesting and thrilling. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!